Gotta, you gotta... Look, I'm going to give you the same question, but first I want to argue with Rick through you. <laughs> okay. Okay? Which is, what if this 25 is just out there as a way to keep the market from taking off? That they don't, the 25 doesn't give them anything. I've said, for what it's worth, if they do 25, they're going to do 50. Because 25 doesn't get them any more restrictive than they kind of already are. But what if that 25 is just out there to keep you from being too happy? Right. We don't, the Fed's job is to make sure we're not happy. Right. I, you know, I agree with you. I think that the having the extra 25 penciled in for the rest of this year gives them optionality. You know, we may see inflation coming down further in the core PCE. We may see the jolts numbers with openings continuing to come down from their peak of 12, now at 8, on their way back to pre-pandemic averages around 5. All those things would say the Fed doesn't need to go. But what if we don't get that? What if things tend to be a little tighter, oil keeps going up, starts affecting right. inflation expectations? Right. It gives them optionality. So I think that's one thing. I think the other thing it does is it prevents the market from working against them. If the Fed had clearly signaled at its last meeting, we're done, we wouldn't be here right now. Equities right. would be higher. Bond yields might be higher, but probably not as much. And so I think what this does is it keeps financial conditions tight. It helps the, the market do the job for the Fed. So maybe they don't have to do 50. If they hadn't done that, it would be going against their goal. So is that the same way as you're saying that at 460, even a 5% 10-year, the Fed's not unhappy here? Oh, I don't think, no. I think, well... The Fed would love it if inflation were already at two and growth were still at three and change. Right. That would be happier. But, but no, I think the Fed is probably not unhappy to see the market doing this. The speed is the one thing that perhaps is unsettling to them, if I had to guess. You know, any kind of volatility, this size of a move in a 10-year this quickly, it's, it creates contagion across every asset class. And we're seeing that in the last week. I'm sure they don't love that, but who can plan that? Rick, what's it like coming to work in the morning, given the movements at uh, the speed? Is it like WTF <laughs> happened today? <laughs> so, so first of all, coming to work, I usually uh, I start uh, trading during London hours, so it's, uh, it's a little early in the day. No, no, no. What time? What time are you up trading? Should I really say? Yeah, yeah. Uh, four. The, uh, so, wait, wait, know, wait, on, on, on how much sleep? The uh, not uh, not, not many not. hours, but the uh, so listen. I'm, I'll say I'll say a couple of things. That, uh, I know we talked about it the other day. This is a pretty extraordinary period of time because you've got an immense amount of cash that's sitting on the sidelines that just wants to sit in money market funds, and then you're getting this immense amount of supply that's coming to the market. And today, when you think about you know, like what is your disposition around putting money to work? When you've got a Fed telling you they'd like to do more, they want to make sure they bolt down inflation, how much duration risk, how much yield curve risk do you want to, you want to take today out the curve when term premium is, pretty, is, uh, is too flat today, when you don't have enough term premium to go out the yield curve? So the decision you have to make is how do I get coupon, how do I get income for clients in fixed income and try and dull your volatility and dull your potential drawdown when you've got you know, a Fed that wants to, wants to keep moving. So, you know, it's a, uh, it's more, you know, bull markets are more fun, but quite frankly, in environments like this, you know, how you can actually generate positive return is, uh, becomes, becomes, quite frankly, a fun challenge. Can, can I just do a little English? I'm sure this crowd understands this, but I just want to be yeah. clear. You're not getting paid, yeah. you feel, to take the risk out the, sh out the long end. Correct. What would it be like to, what would you need to get paid? So, so I think there's a couple of things that are, that are going to happen. I think when the Fed starts, and I think they'll start cutting rates in the second half of the year. I don't think they're in any rush. That second they need half to of do this it. year? Second half next year. Okay. Sorry. Just want so, to make sure. Thank you for that clarification. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. I would have been I buying like, stocks. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, so listen, I think they're in no mood to do it right. anytime soon. I think the second half of the year they're going to do that. So what happens when the Fed starts precipitating a rate cut alongside what I think is a moderating economy? Yield curve is going to steepen out, going to steepen out pretty significantly. My view is today, why do you need to go out to the back end of the curve? Why won't you just stay in the front, front end of the yield curve? And then, you know, we've been extending a little bit out to the belly of the curve because now you're not getting a real, real rate. Belly is three, five, so a three little bit, the, seven? Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah okay. three to the five-year part of the curve. Okay. But now, I mean, now you're not pricing in the cuts like we were before. Now you get the lock-in rates. I mean, think about where real rates are. You know, you're buying a five-year note. If you assume inflation is going to, let's say we settle at two and a half to three, you know, you're getting paid a couple hundred basis points or more in real rate to lock these rates in. So I think you can extend a little bit out the curve. But the idea that I got to buy 30 years an inverted yield curve when it's not a hedge, you think about portfolio allocation, 
it used to be a hedge because for 30 years, right. rates came down, we were in a stable low inflation environment. Today, if inflation's higher, the back end of the yield curve is going to get hit. The same time equities are going to get hit. It's not a hedge. It's actually compounds a potential downside. So we like being in the, in the front now a bit to the belly of the curve. 